Hello guys and welcome to the Battle for Middle Earth 2 patch 1.09 version 2.0, which is the brand new patch for BFME 2. We are on the beautiful map Forts of Limlight, which is a reskin for Forts of Eisen, and that's gonna be the first video commentary for the new patch. At the left side of the map, we have the green Man of the West player Best Enemy, and his opponent at the right side of the map is the blue Goblin player Exilion. Starting with two tunnels, the Man of the West player is starting with one farm, and a barracks which is gonna be built in the front side. So he wanna have the units on the field sooner, this way he can pressure his opponent, you know, faster obviously, and time matters a lot in RTS games. Two tunnels into the third tunnel from Exilion, and we're gonna have a start of the Human Wood from the Man of the West player, which is gonna be used for scouting purposes. And the Goblin player is actually picking up the Tainted Land, which by the way might be used to cover this existing Human Wood from his opponent, Best Enemy, who is playing the Man of the West faction. The second farm is coming up now for the Man of the West player, and he's gonna get those soldiers on the field very very fast. On the other side, three tunnels into the Spider Pit actually from the Goblin player Exilion, so his, his units are gonna be delayed quite a lot. That means if the Man of the West player is gonna go straight forward, he can actually deal quite a lot of damage to his opponent. Okay, beautiful. And by the way, if you are wasting too much time with the Tainted Land, uh, the Human Wood from your open, opponent is gonna be up very very soon. So he might have the chance to use it again and you won't be able to cover that land immediately. You will have to wait a lot of time. But now the Tainted Land is going to be finally used to cover the existing Human Wood. This way those soldiers they won't have the bonuses anymore. The Goblin Cave is coming up next for Exilion. And we're going to have actually more and more soldiers joining the battlefield from the barracks. They cost here 200 each. He's going to cancel the soldiers after seeing the Spider Pit. Which makes sense because you will need some counter units in PFME too. And that's why he's gonna go now for the tower guards. Okay, this tunnel is gonna be definitely taken down. He might also be able to finish off the rubble. If you don't finish off the rubble from the goblin player, the building is gonna reveal itself over time. The spiderling are on the field, they should be easily able to deal with these soldiers. Smart move here from the man of the west player though, he's actually bringing the spiderlings away and trying to kill as much time as possible. Again, time matters a lot in Battle for Middle Earth games. Okay, the second soldier is gonna run straight to the through the fortress. He's taking a lot of damage from the fortress. But one thing you need to know about BFME 2 in, BFME 2 in compared to Rise of the Witch King, the buildings are much much easier to be taken down. It means if you don't pay attention for like five seconds, you will lose your tunnel in just like one second, you know? Okay, the spiderling is gonna go go back. Uh, this one is still chasing, but smart move here from the man of the West player running into the troll. This way he won't give up too many power points and too, you know, too many experience points for the spiderlings. Beautiful. Okay, he's gonna rebuild the tunnel now. He lost two tunnels actually from the first attack. The man of the west player is so far untouched and he's building up a stable after three farms around this area. Painted land is on cooldown, the human wood is also on cooldown. Tower guards are a great counter unit to the spiderlings. He's actually going for the barracks number level 3. Which is not gonna make the barracks tankier, look at this now, has 6000 HP, quite tanky. Almost as tanky as the fortress with 7500 HP. But also the production, you know, speed is gonna be much much faster. The units are gonna come out 25% faster, which is a lot. I mean, which is amazing actually. Your un and on top of that, your building is also able to shoot down the enemy units. Okay, so we have some tower guards, they were able to creep the work layer. At the left side of the river, it looks like they're gonna move to the trolley at the bottom left side. During all this time, Ectelion the goblin player is going for the first attack. With the spiderlings and goblin warriors, he's gonna commit against the farm, but also against the stable. And again, you know, taking down the taking down the buildings in BFME 2 is just much much easier than in Rise of the Witch King. And even a production building like a stable will be taken down in just seconds. And quite unfortunate here for the man of the west player because he was not able to get any Gondor Knights on the field just yet. And that's gonna hurt him big time. 400 command points for the Man of the West player, and 350 command points for the Goblin player Exilion. Two Goblin Caves now, and a Spider Pit level 1. He might go for the transition later on for the Goblin Spider Riders, but for that you have, you have to invest now 500 resources first. Then you will be getting those, you know, calf units from the Goblin faction on the field. The Spiderlings are quite mobile, they are being very very fast, so you can always dodge those soldiers and pikemen. But during all this time, the Man of the West player was able to creep the troll layer at the bottom left side. The tower guards are gonna hit level 3 after that one. And unlike in Rise of the Witch King, the units in BFME 2 are able to level up till level 10. Remember, the normal units in Rise of the Witch King are only able to level up till level 5. 
The archer range is going down and the farm is going down as well. That's a huge attack from Exelio on the goblin player. And the man of the west player was only able to get one Gondor archer on the field. On the bright side, however, he's gonna be able to kill all the spider links from his opponent Exilion. Now a counter-attack is gonna happen with two soldiers. Elven Wood is available, I mean Human Wood is available, sorry the names are different here. But Tainted Land is still on cooldown. Goblin Archers are doing a great job with the Poison Arrows, they are dealing damage over time. And this, with the help of the spider links, he should be able to deal with these soldiers, no big deal. Beautiful. In the meantime, we have a fight in the middle of the map between Tower Guards and Goblins. Even though goblins are basically a counter unit to the tower guards, but remember tower guards are very tanky and goblins are very squishy. Keith Pets is gonna be chosen now. Keith Pets is a debuff, just like in Rise of the Witch King, which is gonna reduce the amount of damage and armor from the opponent uh, units by 25% each. Okay, the inn is gonna be captured. That's gonna give him the chance to recruit some elven warriors. Remember the Men of the West faction in Rise of the Witch King is able to recruit Galadrim warriors. They are pretty much the same unit. Uh, that's a nice situation actually for the Man of the West player. He's gonna be able to kill those Spiderlings now with the help of the Tower Guards. The Goblin player Exilion has to be careful. Also with the Goblin Arches he has to retreat. Smart move here. He's actually making sure that those Goblin Warriors are tanking. And the Goblin Arches are the ones who are dealing damage. And with the help of the Cave Pants, you know, debuffing the enemy units, it was very very helpful. This way he, might, he was just making sure that he will be ending up winning this fight. Okay. Tower Guards are moving to the next creep at the bottom right side. The Warkling is gonna be the next target for those Tower Guards. They are now level 3. They might hit level 4 after this one. And actually, he's losing all these Tower Guards because they are not mobile and the Goblin Warriors are just faster. We have now Gore killed the Goblin King on the field, guys. He was just using the Skull Totem, which is similar to the Skull Totem in Rise of the Witch King. But the leadership system is completely different in compared to Rise of the Witch King. Um, they're gonna get now 25% um, increased armor, uh, reveals the shroud, and they gain also 25% more combat experience. But unlike in Rise of the Witch King, he wants to have the fear resistant in the Skull Totem. With level 4, however, he's gonna unlock the leadership, which is gonna be additional 25% armor and 25% faster experience. Nervy Troll skin, also something you can see, and auto heal plus 50 health points, which is quite a lot. So, you know, there are some differences in terms of leadership system between BFME 2 and Rise of the Witch King. We have some, you know, Gondor Knights on the fields now, finally from the stable level 1, from the Man of the West player. The Gondor Knights here are costing 550, so they are slightly more expensive than in Rise of the Witch King. And they are just holding back with the land, so, you know, the Goblin player is not using his tainted land, knowing the fact that he might get countered by the human wood from the Man of the West player. And obviously the same situation also, you know, count, counts for the Man of the West player, best enemy. If a fight around this area, uh, the Spiderlings are actually doing a great job against those Gondor Knights. Gore kills the Goblin King is already level 3, that's gonna give him the chance to get mounted on a Scorpion. I mean, we can also count, we can also kinda, you know, call him uh, Gore kill the Scorpion King, you know? <laughs> Alright. So we have some archers or elven warriors coming from the inn at the bottom left side, but the inn now is gonna get captured by the goblin player, I think. The elven warriors are gonna still make it out, and they might be able to deal with these goblin warriors. But there is another battalion, which is level 2. We have now 7.5 power points collected for the goblin player Exilion after the cave pads and tainted land. 500 command points available on the other side, we have hobbit allies. Human wood, 2 power points collected on top of that, and 600 command points, now 50 command points available for the man of the west player, best enemy. If also Boromir, the captain of Gondor, joining the battlefield, which unlocks the Horn of Gondor with level 3, unlike in Rise of the Witch King, which would be unlocked with level 2. And during all this time, we have Hobbit allies being summoned offensively to commit against the production buildings from the Goblin player Exilion. They might be able to take down the Spider Pits level 2, which would be huge, because so far I not, I'm not able to see any Spider Riders just yet. It would be almost the same situation like the situation before in which the Goblin player was able to take down the stable. But I think he will end up saving this uh, spider pit, which is huge, and the Hobbit allies were kind of wasted. We have also a fissure up on the fields now, he might go for the cave trolls, and you can also see the differences in this kind of situations, right? There are no half troll swordsmen, unlike in Rise of the Witch King. There are no fire drakes, unlike in Rise of the Witch King, so you have less units, less factions in BFME 2 in compared to Rise of the Witch King. You can also uh, recruit the giants just like in uh, Rise of the Witch King from a level 3 fissure. 
We have now some wild men of Dunland coming uh, on the field uh, with the torches, purchase. So they're gonna have now more damage. The Gondor Knights were able to get away. They have also level two, so they will, you know, they will be just recovering over time. The men of the West players making sure to get one of the last remaining creeps on the map. The work lane at the top left side. That's gonna leave only the, the, the troll lane at the top right side on the field. Okay. Uh, the stable is level 2 now. That's gonna mean we're gonna see finally some Rohirrim. Rohirrim are much more expensive than the Gondor Knights. But they cost, only, they cost the same amount of command points, which is nice. Uh, we have Elven Warriors. They are able to fight with Sword and Bow. We have some Soldiers and also some Tower Guards level 4. Goblin King is on his Scorpion. He's now almost level 5. Level 10 is gonna be the time for him to shine because he will get the chance to summon 3 Fire Drakes under his control, which is a huge power spike, by the way. Almost 7 power points collected now for the Man of the West player. On the other side, we have Scavenger picked from the Goblin player Xelion. That means whenever he will be able to kill enemy units, he will gain permanently resources, which is always nice. Nice Rample here with the Gondor Knights against the Wild Man of Dunland. Smart move from Xelion, making sure to switch to the whole crown stance to minimize the damage income from the Gondor Knights. It looks like he's gonna disengage now. Uh, with his goblin army and goblins are nice for harassment but they are not the best units for all out fights they are very very cost efficient after all they cost even less in bfme 2 than in rise of the witch king they cost 75 here remember in rise of the witch king they cost 100 each okay 700 command points for the goblin player and also the same command points for the man of the west player the spiderlings are being taken down without being able to destroy the farm which is almost level 2 the goblin player is actually taking down the last creep remaining on the map Forts of Limelight. Boromir is almost level 3 now, he's only one level away. That's gonna unlock the Horn of Gondor, which will stun the enemy units. And he has also leadership with level 5, and the Captain of Gondor, which is gonna give experience to the selected allied units, which will be unlocked with level 7. 10 power points collected now for the Man of the West player. And for the goblin player, we have 4 power points collected, but. Keep in mind that he went also for the cave pads. So if we count the cave pads, which cost five power points on top of the four and a half power points he has, he would have almost the same amount of power points like his opponent. So the game is quite even right now in terms of command points, but also in terms of power points, guys. Spider Pit is level two. He's gonna go for the Spider Pit level three now. That's gonna make the building very very tanky. Four and four thousand, almost five thousand HP now. Goblin caves, two of them, and a fissure level two. Okay. Uh, this half troll pikemen, they're gonna be a nice counter to the Rohirrim and also to the Gondor Knights. Rohirrim are just like the Spider Riders, they are able to, you know, fight with sword and bow. I think the Goblin Spider Riders are slightly cheaper, yes. The Rohirrim are actually quite expensive in compared to them. They cost 150 more for each. And uh, look at the situation, they were slowed down big time. Uh, Tainted Land is on cooldown, you know, Human Wood is on cooldown, and also the Hobbit Allies is on cooldown. Boromir will be very impactful once he hits level 3. That's going to be a huge power spike for the Captain of Gonza. Because being able to stun the enemy units actually is huge. It's going to give you a, you know, a lot of window in which you can work with and take down the enemy units. The Rohirrim are dying very, very fast. And you get plus 19 for every single one of them just because of the scavenger. 13 power points collected now for the Men of the West Playboys. 950 command points available. That's huge. The stable is level 2, you are not able, unlike in Rise of the Witch King, to recruit the Knights of Dol Amroth here. Tainted Land is going to be used offensively to buff the units. That means Human Wood can now also be used offensively, potentially around this area, which would be nice. But the stable is level 2, is going to be taken down. Also the farm in the backside is being taken down. The rangers are not reacting, and he's going to use now the Human Wood to counter the existing Tainted Land from the Goblin player. But the stable is gonna be still taken down and you also get money from killing enemy buildings because of the scavenger. Okay, I would love to see uh, the human wood being used offensively. It would be just much better, especially now when he has the Dunedin allies available, which can be used to kill the enemy units. And with the tower guards and Rohirrim, you can actually take down enemy buildings. It would be nice. We have also some trolls now joining the battlefield. They cost a little bit more in in BFME 2 than in Rise of the Witch King, but they cost only 35 command points, that means you can actually recruit many of these. We have a tree in the, hand, in the hands of this troll, that looks actually pretty nice, look at this. It looks much more realistic to me than in Battle for Middle Earth 1 and Rise of the Witch King. 7 power points collected now, after the Dunadan allies, <coughs> which is pretty nice actually. 800 command points available against 500 only from Exilion the Goblin player. He has almost 10 power points collected after the scavenger. 
Okay, um, Gore kills the Goblin King is kinda in a, in a bad spot. He might not be able to get out. Once he loses the tunnel, he won't have any escape ability now. He's actually quite tanky, guys. He's not taking too much damage and one-shotting these sort of hit him in tower, guys, which is quite impressive. And look at this. He's actually killing them in a second and getting a lot of money because of the scavenger. And very, very tanky as well. He's level 7 now. Level 8, I believe. No, level 6 unlocks the poison stinger, but you need to be mounted in order to use it. The ranger summon will be now used. The trolls, we have three of them on the field, guys. Hobbit allies is gonna be used as well. Warchan is on cooldown for the goblin player. And 13 power points collected for the man of the west player. Warchan is different in BFME 2 as well. It gives you 40% damage, 50% experience, and 10% movement speed. So it's completely different when we compare that to the war chant in uh, EFME 1, but also in Rise of the Witch King. The trolls are actually smashing, guys. They have a lot of splash damage, area damage, and you don't want to be clumped against trolls because that's what they like. They want to hit you with a tree and they will hit multiple units at once. And a great defense after all, and all the trolls were able to survive so far. And actually, the Man of the West player was committing big time against this, you know, for this attack. Remember, he was using the allies of the Dunedain and the allies of the Hobbits. Now he's even using the Tom Bombadil summon, guys. Tom Bombadil is also different in BFME 2 than in Rise of the Witch King. It offers you leadership. Uh, armor leadership and also experience leadership. But the trolls are MVPs, definitely. They are doing a great job. Tom Bombadil has the Sonic song, which is on cooldown. But the trolls are definitely... Uh, the best units in those kind of situations when you want to defend yourself against a clumped army. Beautiful. We have now Eomir joining the battlefield, the Horse Lord from Rohan. He has Spear ability available with level 1. And Leadership is going to be available once he hits level 3. Which, by the way, is um, Horse Lords. Only Cav units are going to get Leadership around Eomir. It means only Gondor Knights, but also the Rohirrim. We might see some more ranges later on. The farm in the front side is almost level 3. That's very important to keep these two farms alive. Uh, almost 6 power points collected. Full command points available for the men of the West player, guys. Scorpion King is getting knocked back from Boromir. And I think he's not paying attention. And Boromir will actually be able to take him down. And that unlocks the leadership from Boromir, boys. Which is 50% uh, increased damage. It's actually quite a lot. Damage leadership. I mean, the leadership system, like mentioned several times in this video is completely different in compared to Rise of the Witch King. Okay, Eomir is gonna chase down this, uh, you know, Goblin Warriors and the Troll. The Troll is, by the way, almost level 5. I mean, even Eomir has to be careful, guys. Tower Guards can actually deal with the Troll in a second. The farm is gonna be taken down in a second. The Trolls are dealing a lot of damage, to not only to units, but also to the buildings. But the Troll is not gonna make it out alive. He's gonna run through the uh, Tower Guards and will be taken down. And I think the Man of the West player has to be a little bit more careful with his Rohirrim. He's losing them quite easily and quite often. And again, they are very cost, you know, cost expensive units. They cost 750 E, so you don't want to lose them like that. And power points collected. Uh, Tainted Land is going to be used once again in the middle of the map for the, for the Spider Riders to trample. In this kind of situations, I would not recommend to use the Human Wood anymore. In a spot like this, you don't need it. I think using it now more offensively would be the key to victory, but we shall see. Okay, the Rohirrim were able to take down one of the tunnels, but they won't be able to finish off the rubble just yet. Goblin Spider Riders are fighting against the Elven Warriors. Um, Boromir gives leadership that's gonna make them really strong. The Rohirrim are gonna fight in a bad spot. They are going for a trample, and they're gonna deal a lot of damage, and they are actually being surprisingly tanky as well. Even the Elven Warriors with the leadership, you know, they have... But now the leadership is going to be kind of pointless because cave pads is going to be used. However, the cave pads uh, are not going to nullify the enemy leadership, guys. Unlike... Actually, it does. Okay. Actually, neutralizes leadership and buff effects from the enemy. That's actually a huge ability, guys. You know, buff is also going to be gone. That means Warchan is a buff, for example. Uh, or it's not. I don't know. I need to be a little bit more knowledgeable about the buff system in BFME 2. And once I am, I would like to make a video, guys. Let me know in the comment section below if you want to see a video like this in the future. I would like to make one of these for you guys. We have also Shilop on the field. A hero I would love to see more often in Rise of the Witch King. We have also Darkness being used. Darkness is, by the way, a little bit different. You can you can see yourself, like, cancels Freezing Rain, Darkness, Cloud Spray, Killing. Uh, covers the entire map in Darkness for a short period of time. Uh, hearts gain damage, armor. And experience, which is huge, by the way. 
Monsters gain also something, unlike in Rise of the Witch King, monsters are able to receive leadership in uh, FME too. So trolls, mountain giants, they will have also a damage boost, armor boost, and also more experience, which is quite a lot. And it lasts for 180 seconds, quick math, that's 3 minutes in total. He has collected 15 power points on top of that, Ethereum is shining bright like a diamond, being able to hold himself even though he is on lower CP, CP means command points, than his opponent pretty much all game long. On the other side we have 19 power points collected for the Man of the West player, so he's only 6 power points away from getting the 25 unlocked. Eomer is level 1 still, so he was not able to get any kind of experience so far. Ixilion is making sure to demolish these structures in time, to not give many more power points to his opponent, because he's an experienced player, he knows that he is aiming to 25. He was able to see the uh, Donatan allies, uh, which means he is really close for the 25. Chilop doesn't care about uh, mountains, by the way. She's able to walk through everything. She's very mobile, also with the tunnel ability, which will be unlocked once she hits level 7. Okay, uh, Rohirrim are doing absolutely nothing. Uh, we have also no upgrades coming on just yet. Archer range is level 3 though. He has not purchased, howsoever, the fighter upgrade just yet. Um, Chilop and Gorkil the Goblin King, they are quite healthy. I mean, Shilob is a little bit damaged, but it's not a big deal. Orkel has to be careful. You don't want to fight against the giant, against the tower guards when you are mounted. In those kind of situations, it would make much more sense to get dismounted. That's gonna make you tank here against Spikeman. Eomir is still. Oh, actually, Eomir was able to get level 2 finally. 22 power points collected. Hobbit allies is gonna be available very, very soon. And he was not even using the human wood to counter this tainted land, but he was also not using the human wood elsewhere. Darkness is gonna be up very very soon and we can read in the description it's a huge buff for the for the allied units for the entire map. Okay, the farm is gonna be taken down next. So we have small map control fights. If uh we have a workshop now for the man of the west player, he's gonna go for some trebuchets and then start sieging. There's also a statue here in the backside for more armor and experience points. Also gonna increase your command points by 10. Do well for the sustain. So the units can, you know, are gonna be able to heal up over time. Darkness is being used now. Again, a huge buff. Painted land is on cooldown. 22 power points collected now for the for the goblin player. Fight is happening. Nice, beautiful trample with the Rohirrim. I mean, goblins are still goblins. Even if you buff them, they're gonna be still weak. But Awakened Worm is gonna be chosen, which is gonna be used offensively, if I'm not mistaken. Well, actually, he's gonna use it defensively, and the splash damage is dealing a lot of damage. You want to make sure to kill this trebuchet, which by the way gives you 150 resources when you do that, with the scavenger being available, or being chosen from the spellbook of the goblin faction. And we have earthquake being used, ladies and gentlemen. And didn't one shot the fissure level two and the goblin cave in the front side, but all the other buildings, especially the fortress, almost got one shotted. Guys, look at the HP from the fortress; it's almost down. The hobbits are burning alive from the worm. Plus 100 for killing Frodo Baggins. Batman of Dunland is gonna be available, and the worm is doing a great job, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, just devastating the entire army, just like that. Burning them alive. I like to see that. A very, very powerful summon here, definitely from the goblin player Exilion. Knows the timing. Earthquake was nice and great. However, there is no follow up, and if you don't have any follow up, the fortress is gonna heal up or rebuild itself over time. And ideally, you wanna use it when you are about to attack. This way you can hurt the buildings, kill all the expansions around the fortress and then actually go for a finishing attack against the fortress. That should be the dream. Our guys, they should be able to win this fight. Around the statue they are tankier. Uh, but remember darkness is still active guys. Donut and allies is gonna be available very very soon. Can be used in the middle of the map. We have some ranges finally with fire or upgrade purchase so they're gonna have more DPS. White men are doing a lot of damage and darkness is coming in clutch for the goblin player Ectalion. And look at this guys, Gorkil the Goblin King is already level 8 and he's healing up over time. So he's only 2 levels away from getting the, the call from the deep ability unlocked which is gonna allow him to summon 3 fire drakes. Okay, the farm here is gonna be taken down. Actually Longshot was able to save it from the rangers. Allies are gonna be ready, uh, I mean... The Ranger allies are gonna be ready, the Tom Bomber deal is gonna be ready, Human Wood is gonna be ready. 11 power points collected on top of that. We are getting some more Rohirrim and Rangers on the field. I mean the elite units from the Man of the West faction. Boromir by the way is level 7 now. Has all the abilities unlocked. 
And Boromir and Eomir were the only heroes I was able to see so far. He's gonna use the human wood, but it's gonna be immediately counter-used by the Tainted Land, which makes sense. Instill Terror will be used, that's gonna cause the enemy units to run away, as the man of the West player is trying his hardest to finish off the fortress. Let's see if he can do that. I mean, Boromir is still around, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he is around. Tom Bombadil is also around. The level 5 Tower Guard. Is this gonna be enough to finish off the fortress? That's the question. Uh, we have the Rangers dying very, very fast against the Trolls. You know, Shelob is gonna be also committing now. That's a, that's a very risky commitment with the Tower Guards. He might lose everything and I think that's gonna be also the case. And using a human woods like this is a very risky move as well. Like, you know it's gonna be counter-used by the Tainted Land from Ectelion. Boromir was just able to kill one of the Trolls in the middle. He's now level 8. But unlike many other heroes in BFME 2, Boromir doesn't have a huge power spike after level 7. Like with level 7 here, oh the Watcher is coming in clutch ladies and gentlemen and it's gonna take down Boromir as well. Holy quacamole and look at the HP from Gorkil the Goblin King, I think that's gonna be calculated, you know, luck is not even involved in this one guys. Of course it is, I mean he was like 1 HP, that's more luck than skill, trust me on that one. But he's all about to hit level 10 which is gonna be a nice thing to watch. Him being able to summon fire drakes under his control would be just huge. Shilob is doing a great job as well, guys. Killing Rohirrim one by one, getting more and more experience. Level 5 is going to be unlocked very soon. Level 6 is going to unlock the Poison Singer. Level 7, the Tunnel. And the level 10 is going to unlock the Disability, which cripples enemy units in spider weeps for 4.5 seconds and drains their life for the duration. Shilob is healed based on the total damage caused to the heroes. I mean... Sounds nice, I won't be able to see that I think in this game, she needs still, to, you know, hits level 10. I was never able to see this ability before, uh, I'm curious how it would like, how it look, look like, you know, against heroes, against units. I think it would be pretty impressive. But we might get the chance to see the call from, call from the deep ability here from God Kills the Goblin King. The fortress is safe for now, you can see it's healing up slowly but surely over time. And 4 power points collected, and I think the timing here is, uh, you know, very impactful from the Goblin player. Even though he didn't go for the 25 like the Man of the West player did, I would say he always made the right choice. Like the Worm Summon was very necessary and important and very impactful as well. You could see he was able to kill the Trebuchets, he was able to kill a lot of units. Now the Cloud Break is being used. Cloud Break is gonna turn this, turn the, uh, turn the straws into stones by the way. Look at this guys, it looks so nice. <laughs> that looks dope. Cloudbreak uh, is not gonna last very long because the darkness is gonna be available in about, in about a minute. But during the during the time of the Cloudbreak, you know, the Man of the West player will be able with the Rangers to kill some trolls and units, which is nice. What Cloudbreak does, it cancels also the darkness. So, um, you know, the Man of the West player could have waited for the darkness to be used once again and then used the, used the Cloudbreak right after for the win-win situation. Because darkness is gonna be literally be up now in like five seconds, and the heroes are doing a great job. But getting the necessary power uh, experience points after level seven, eight, it's much much harder than getting the levels early on, which makes sense, especially for heroes like Shelob and God Kills the Goblin King. But if you send units forward like this, you're gonna just feed them more, guys. It's a very very bad mistake from the Man of the West player, and he's not gonna be able to achieve too much. Now we have Rangers coming. There's a skull totem on the ground from God Kills the Goblin King. During all this time, Exilion is just trying to get the power points he needs or the experience he needs for this hero to hit level 10. We have some small fights going on with the Wildman of Dunland summon offensively as he's able to take down a couple of these farms which is nice because the Man of the West player is sitting on full command points now for a really long time. Hobbit allies is also available for the Man of the West player. He's gonna be able to kill those Lambermans first which is nice. And but the thing is he has not enough units to commit against the fortress. And that's really bad because you know Earthquake has a really long a bit, a long cooldown guys. So he won't be able to use it again before the fortress is full HP. Okay, we have trolls and uh, pikemen with the darkness being used, they are tankier, they deal more damage. He's gonna commit against the fortress. And keep in mind that unlike in Rise of the Witch King, the Man of the West faction does not have a rebuild ability in the spellbook. Hobbits are gonna be used defensively. Horn of Gondor is being used to stun the enemy units. With the leadership of Boromir around them, they should be able to deal with these units. Fireworks are gonna be used from Samwise Gamgee. Uh, Firepracker it's called. 
We have to Worm Summon once again to kill a lot of units. And Worm, I like to see that more in the FME too, because it can be used not only to deal damage to the enemy buildings, but also to actually kill enemy units with, which is always nice. So it's nice. To, uh, normally in Rise of the Witch King, let's be honest, we will never see the Worm being used defensively. Like, it's an ability you always use, you know, to kill the enemy buildings. And not for defense. And that's the second time now Ectilion is going for a defensive usage of the Awakened Worm ability from the Goblin Faction. Okay, uh, 562 resources for killing a hero, I think. Or was it Tomb Bombadil? Like, I'm not sure. I think it was a hero because Boromir is still around and Tomb Bombadil is, a, is on cooldown still. We have 13, almost 14 power points collected. It's a back and forth game. Uh, but I think the Goblin player has now a great advantage just because of his heroes. Uh, his heroes are really highly leveled, guys. Warchan has been used on these units. The throws are hitting like an absolute truck. There is one Rohirrim alive and, you know, he won't make it out alive from this one. He's actually getting knocked back and the troll should be able to finish him off. He's gonna commit now to this fight. He has to burst down the troll really fast. Elvin, human wood has to be used instantly in those kind of situations, guys. Let me actually check who is the host player. It's being, it's being played on a neutral host, which is the most balanced thing in Battle for Middle Earth games. Because if you don't know, host advantage in BFME games means quite a lot. That's why in the tournaments, which I'm hosting at least, I'm making sure that I am the host in all the games. This way no one no one has an advantage or a disadvantage. Rolls are very tanky. He's hitting absolutely hard. <laughs> 24 power points collected now for the Man of the West player after Cloud Break, Dunad and Elias and the Earthquake. He's gonna go now for the Army of the Dead Boys, which might be used offensively. On the other side, the Goblin player has collected 19 power points after the Watcher. The Worm, the Darkness, the Wildman of Dunland, the Scavenger, the Cave Bats, the Warchan, and the Tainted Land. Nice defense, he was finally using the Human Wood. Gorkiel is almost level 10. Uh, Shelob has to be around somewhere as well. Um, yeah, let's see. I mean, Gorkiel, there, there she is. She's now level 6. Poison Stinger is unlocked. One Rohirrim was able to survive. Uh, uh, you know, I think she needs, I mean, he needs to use it now. Like, Army of the Dead has to be used to kill the enemy units, but I can also understand why he's not using it, because there is no follow-up follow up again. Like, you want to make sure, if you are using those game-changing abilities like Army of the Dead, Earthquake, you want to make sure that you have something, like, to follow up this attack, you know? Like, you use Army of the Dead to kill the enemy units, but what then? If you have nothing around to actually finish off the opponent, it would be a just a waste. There is a level 10 uh, Fire Drake coming from the Fortress, that's a Fortress upgrade. That's not one of the small ones in Rise of Twitch King you are able to recruit from the Fissure. That's a big one. He's coming out level 10. Inferno is available, boys. He's gonna use it, and the Inferno is burning these units and one-shotting them almost. And the units, which are not dying instantly, are burning and, you know, being damaged over time. Even Rangers are getting actually into the fire range, and they're gonna also die. The Fire Drake is also dealing a lot of damage. I mean, it's like a special effect after all. The Man of the West special effect is not that impactful. <laughs> the Ivory Tower is gonna give you like more more uh, vision control and also a little bit more movement speed for your allied units, but that's all about it. Like when you compare that to other factions like Isengard with the Thunderbolt, the, the I don't know, like the uh, Mordor faction with the Spire fo Fireball of Gorgorov, you know, like the big... Fireball on top of the enemy units that can actually deal devastating amounts of damage. The Ivory Tower on the other side is like more like meh, you know? Six power points collected after the Earthquake. I think he's waiting for the Earthquake to be ready and he's gonna use it in combination. Uh, on the other side, the Goblin player has finally managed to get the Balrog unlocked, guys. I mean, Balrog is Balrog. We know how powerful Balrog can be, especially when used correctly, because you have a hero which you can control for like a minute and that you can use it micro with that that's why i like uh, abilities like balrog more than an earthquake for example because you can smooth with that Whiteman of Thunland and the warchan is going to be used for offensive move the stable is level 2 it's going to be a little bit tankier the Whiteman, just like in rise of the witch king have a pillage ability as well in bfme 2 but the balrog is being used defensively to kill the enemy units yes time he can always use the wings over and over again actually to fly around and I think that's gonna be also the case. Boromir is gonna uh, be actually, you, you know, whipped <laughs> from Balrog. He's almost getting one-shotted, but he was able to survive. Heal is available for the Man of the West player. That means he can use the heal to actually heal up the Boromir. 
Binks uh, have almost no cooldown, guys. That means you can use it over and over again. Earthquake is available and Army of the Dead is available. Army of the Dead was also used during all this time to kill the enemy units for defense. Vulpen of Dunland and the other units around. Army of the Dead is also dealing a lot of damage to Balrog. But Balrog won't die to that if you are paying attention. You can always fly around, use your mobility. Oh, he actually dies. That was a crazy death animation, guys. He died mid-air. And then he actually went here while being dead. <laughs> That's nice. I like it. Earthquake was used once again. But this time Fortress is a little bit tankier with the expansions. I mean, with the upgrades on the Fortress. It has now more than 50% HP. And the buildings around it are not getting one-shotted as well. Like, look at this spider pit. It's not lost too much HP. Same goes to the level 3 fissure. Fire Drake is still remaining on the field. And that comes from using Army of the Dead defensively. Like, ideally you want to use it when you go for that attack and your opponent is trying to defend. Then you can use the Army of the Dead on top of the enemy units and kill them. I mean, obviously, the Goblin player Ectelium was also using his Balrog defensively. It's not about the Balrog, but I think it's about the summon of the Balrog. The summon animation, the summon damage from Balrog is dealing a lot of damage. Uh, much more than the Worm and also in much larger area. That means it can be easily used for defensive purposes as well. I mean, that's a game-changing ability, right, 25? And the Man of the West player unlocked both of them, but yet he was not able to achieve too much with these summons. I mean, he was using Earthquake literally the second time now. But again, you damage them, but then what? You know, you need to have something to attack your opponent with. Otherwise, it's gonna hurt him, but it's not gonna finish him. Okay, uh, Fire Drake is level 10 at the bottom left side. We have uh, Shelob being almost level 9, actually. Okay, we might be able to see this ability potentially. I don't see Gorkil the Goblin King on the field anymore. The long shot was coming in, the arrow volley was coming in clutch against the units at the bottom left side. Level 2 farm is going down, full command points still for the Man of the West player. He never went for the for other heroes besides Boromir and Eomir, guys. I would love to see more heroes. Like Aragorn could be a you know great choice. Gandalf obviously could be a great choice as well. Trolls are very, very tanky. The darkness is still active. And look at this. I mean, he was using Darkness. I don't know why the Man of the West player is not using the Cloud Break then. Like, use Cloud Break, and this way the effect of Darkness is gonna be gone. The damage leadership they have, the armor leadership they have, they're gonna lose this. I think Gorkil died before, but ladies and gentlemen, Gorkil is level 10. I didn't even pay attention when and where Gorkil died, but that doesn't matter if he's back on the menu, boys. He's gonna use Inferno once again to kill a lot of units, and I think Ectelion is doing a great job, mainly with his heroes and the Fire Drake from the Fortress, to keep his open in check 24-7. I mean, whenever the Man of the West player is grouping a big army and trying to go for an attack, it feels like Ectelion has always an answer to that. And it's not gonna become any better for the Man of the West player after Shiloh hits level 10. Alright, so let's see what he can do with now. The Fire Drake is dealing like a lot of damage to the farm. And Scavenger was actually paying off big time. I'm assuming the Goblin player Ectelion got around more than 10,000, maybe more, maybe 20,000 resources in total from the Scavenger all alone. Fire Drakes, we're gonna keep an eye on that one from Gorkil the Goblin King. It can be used now offensively. Cloud Break is being used to stun the enemy units, boys. Into the Hobbit allies, into the Tom Bomber deal. But the Fire Drake and the heroes are not getting stunned. Tom Bombadil is gonna use the Sonic Song ability to kill some of these units. Where are the additional fire drakes when we need them? I don't see them, and Gorkil is not using them just yet. He is trying to escape. Tom Bombadil is gonna try to fight against the giant. Giant is gonna deal a lot of damage to the enemy buildings. We have Spider Allies now being used offensively as well, just why not? Okay, he is now using finally the fire drakes, guys. There we go. Look how many fire drakes now are on the on the field for the Goblin Plague Xelion. Fire everywhere, and every one of them, guys, has the ability of Inferno. So you can use Inferno in, like, all the map, pretty much, you know? Boromir is back on the field, but I think he won't be able to match with these Fire Drakes, match with Shelob, match with Gorkil the Goblin King, who is level 10. The siege has begun, the tower is gonna be taken down first, he's fighting against Shelob, Poison Stinger is gonna be used against Boromir, Gil is coming in clutch to save the day, but I think it's gonna delay, but it's not gonna deny. The farm is going down next, level 2, and the Man of the West player is gonna drop down to only 775 command points. During all this time, Rohirrim Allies is gonna be used for offensive movements. He's gonna try to deal as much damage as possible to the economy, 
to the goblin player he might lose the level 3 tunnel which by the way means he's gonna lose 100 command points but again command points at this stage of the game don't matter because he has all the heroes he needs and he has a scavenger for the for the resource income the giant is still alive there is nothing that can take him down and the giant with the help of the white man of the unland with the help of the heroes of the goblin faction will be able to finish off the fortress which will mean if i'm not mistaken the end of the game for the man of the west player very well played from both the players guys great performance the game is over exilion is gonna be the winner of this one thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this one if you did please don't forget to leave a like on this video subscribe if you haven't done it yet this channel is dedicated to bfme content so you will see more and more of these kind of content in the future let me know what do you guys think about bfme 2 would you like to see more videos in the future uh, of bfme 2 patch 1.09 version 2.0 I would like to hear your opinion or listen or read your opinion in the comment section below, guys. Thank you again so much for watching. As always, stay beyond standards. Peace.